with one naira, of course, you need to have about 100 and 250 of that money mm -hmm. to buy the same products. Now, that will obviously affect the microeconomy of the country. Now, if the microeconomy of the country, or the, sorry, the micro business of the country is not well structured, which is meant to be the fundamental base of every striving country, then we're going to have a problem. Because if there is no enough jobs out there, there are no enough businesses out there, because these um, are micro, uh, micro businesses in this country is obviously being forgotten. The government of this country is running the whole show. It is not supposed to be so. The private sector are meant to be the fundamental tools running an economy. But now we have more and more private sector participation, especially in core government, like, sorry, in core sectors, for instance, in power, agriculture, manufacturing, automobile. We're beginning to see that more and more the, 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 the government is partnering with the private sector. So yeah. with this development now, mm. should we expect to see a turnaround in all the numbers that we're, we're looking at? especially as regards meeting and achieving this um, target mm. of the World Bank Group? Hopefully. Um, I think I should give a, a kudos to, the, um, to this current administration because there are quite a, a number of policies um, they put in place. I mean, if you look at the agricultural sector, I mean, it's actually striving. It's moving on. Now, but we just hope that the policy doesn't derange and we don't backtrack from where we are going now. Because we've seen it in, in previous governments where they have some policies and eventually after a period of time, it, diminish, it diminishes into the, into the thin air. Now, so, now, if we look critically into the, into the sector, now we're moving on the, the manufacturing um, and sector is meant to be growing as well, but we have epileptic power um, uh, um, problem in the country. Now, if you have, um, if you try to build the manufacturing industry or the sector and we have a political power system, how is how are they going to grow? But then you know that the ongoing reforms to that we've seen at least the beginning part of it where oh. 14 companies have successfully bought into the unbundled PHC yet. So yes, definitely we should begin to see some of that uh, actualize and translate to more business. But then everybody always refers to agriculture, manufacturing and automobile and all the rest of it. But nobody really talks about the real sector where we know that that's where crucial growth is supposed to start from because the real sector is where the real people are. Okay, let me give an example. When we talk about globalization, which is liberalization as well. What does that tell you? It means every country should have a free trade um, um, mechanism amongst themselves. Mm. Now, we, have, we belong to the ECOWAS, we belong to the AU as well. Now, assuming, assuming today there's open barrier, there, I said there's no barrier amongst all these countries and we can trade freely among ourselves, which bring um, uh, investments and um, growth into every country. Now, the issue is this. How many products do we have to trade amongst, our, amongst other countries? Now, we have a, majorly we have oil, mm -hmm. okay? Now we're moving into agriculture. Now, just two products. What happened to all our services? What happened to them all the manufacturing companies? Now, if you go to all organized developed countries, they actually, when they have in the EU, for example, they don't just trade one or two goods. They, I mean, we, they have numerous of goods they actually trade among themselves, and also the services is actually booming all around, all, all around the corner. Now, looking at, coming back to home again into our human resources um, 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 structure, we have a, this is a country that has over 170 million people. What are we doing with our huge human capital resources that we have in there? Look at India, for example. Now, if you go to the UK today, <coughs> excuse me, majority. Of the, of, of the Asians have been, um, I'm sorry, the, 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 the UK businesses have been outsourced to the Asians, right? Now, the customer services, for example, majority of them, the customer service center has been transferred to, the, uh, to, to India, and so on and so forth. Oh. The immigration sector, the post office, the retail system. Now, what does that tell you about India? They were able to train, invest heavily in training and equipping their citizens so they become a potential assets to everywhere in the world. So people could actually come to them and buy, or should I ask, if I use the word buy, the yeah, human services, services and, and, and use it for the development of their own countries. So now let's tie, let's bring that back home. Yeah. Is enough being done to encourage the growth of domestic business in all sectors, especially with a view to becoming a part of the global trading economy, like you've just said? 
we could, we, we, we need more policies to be um, to be put into place. More uh, policies, and the policies that we have already not enough. The ones we have is not well. It, it, it's just well. We, 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 we every day we hear about these policies, but what's uh, the um, how can I say the the positive nature of all this policy? Are we beginning to see them overturning into productivity? Of course not. We need to really, the, the government really need to sit down and bring in a lot of stakeholders from the private sector. That's right. This is what we need to do. If you set up a business today, you don't have any support from the government as a private business. Okay? Then you don't have facilities, um, the credit facilities. You don't have um, um, organizations like business um, guardians, the business angels, and networks to actually support you to grow your business. So you are by yourself, doing everything by yourself. Well, Mike, so how do you each grow? time this comes up, this yeah. issue about financing, we know that uh, we, we we know that there's so many interventions that have been given for various sectors that are very important that at this particular point in time, these are the sectors that should be able to jumpstart the economy before beginning to face the other sectors. Yeah. Now, funds have been made available. My question always is when this comes up in, in whatever conversation I'm having is has, has any of this, um, have any of these business owners gone to make themselves or, or have any of these business owners going to access this funds? Have they made any attempts to speak to people as regards accessing the funds? B bearing in mind that when you're going to access funds, mm. whether from a bank or, a, or, a financial, or the, any other financial institution, you have to have proper documentation. Now, do you have all of your documentation in place for you to go and stand in front of a, either a discount house or a financial, or any other financial institution or a lender to ask for finance? Because everybody keeps beating down on the same door. We do not have enough finances. So have they made themselves available have, for any have, of this? Yeah, thank you. I, I have two questions based on what you just said now. Now, you say the fund has, has been made available. By who? And where are the funds? What is it called? Where is this fund? Where, how can they access these funds? That's the first question. The second question is, in most um, developed countries, I'll tell you how it works. They have, within the Ministry of um, Commerce and Industry, they have a sector that actually been, that are dedicated themselves in building, supporting, and growing, mentoring new businesses coming up. Now, if I set up a business in the UK, for example, which I obviously have, um, what happens is you will have um, an organization that will write to you because obviously you write to your business, you want to go into that business. They, they will write to you or they will come to you or there are quite a lot of them out there that you can actually go to and say, I'm setting up this business, what do I do? Show me how, how to do this. Now, they will come behind you, hold your hand and say, right, you need to do this, where's your business plan? Do you, can you do a business plan? This is how, if you can't write a business plan, because without a business plan, you can't have access to loan or other So we need to do, have as much as possible a lot of mentoring programs. Absolutely. absolutely. Now, the, all these people, all these organizations, it's either they're being funded by the government or some of them are NGOs, but they are all, always, there for, <coughs> always there for every business to actually go to. Uh, it's, there, it's like a one-stop uh, one shop. Hmm whereby you go into and they tell you this has to write a business plan. When you write a business plan, why, where do you want to set a business? Who are your customers? Now, you have to be able to differentiate who are you and your business. So there's a lot of things that goes on. And in most cases, you go through some training, some business training. So you can actually find out, is this business for me? Because the point, I always say this, some people have no business in going into business. Mm. So if you, if you don't have business going into business and you're going into business, there's every possibility that you're going to fail. But if you have someone to advise you from the onset and tell you this how to do it, then you know how to do it. But now, sorry, back to the issue of funds. You say, yeah. how can you access funds? You where, ask the the fund? where are the funds? Yeah. Now, these funds have been made available. By, right. you, you hear about them. The Central Bank of Nigeria has released funds for some certain sectors Hold on. Okay. And uh, recently as well, to encourage uh, farmers in, in the agricultural sector, both young and old, some certain amount of money was also disbursed about 15 billion naira mm. to help with the planting season. And they're, they're saying that it's not just a, a, a one-off thing. We're definitely going to be seeing more of this. Now, is it that people are not aware that these funds have been made available, which is a reason why they're not accessing it? And that's awareness, yes. That is one issue as well. If the government has a policy and there is no um, universal awareness coming out to everyone in every sector or in major sectors, 
strategically, then how will people be able to find out that these funds are available? Because I'm a businessman as well, but I can tell you, I thought about it, but I don't even know how it works. I don't know where to access it. I don't even know if I need it. I don't know where to go to. That's the point. Now, the, if, if, if the government is saying that this is the money, I'll give you a simple example. The government shouldn't be focusing. I mean, I'm not saying they're not doing the best they can, mm -hmm. but they need more strategy in place. Now, for example, the, if there is a, a sector where um, the government wants to focus on, they deliberately focus on that sector and forget the other ones. Now, a good example is this. Look at the bank of industry. The bank of industry focus mainly on manufacturing sector alone. So if you're in the services sector and yeah, you go to the BOI, they're going to turn you down. Now, what is the government doing about, they shouldn't be focusing on just the manufacturing alone because the service sector complements the manufacturing sector. So the service sector, which is more critical in the economy, what are the government, did they have any bank or such a border or institution that has been set up for the service sector to actually be able to accept? These are all the things that they, have to, um, they need to look into. And all this, Obviously, we bring in buoyant economy and produce more jobs for the people than begin to eradicate them um, and poverty as, as, as we're talking about it. Okay, so Mike, we're going to take a breather now. And when we come back, we're actually going to review what the legislators uh, should be doing in ensuring that most of these poverty elevation programs are actually properly implemented. And aside from that, we're also going to be looking at World Bank's programs here in mm. Nigeria and uh, the success they've recorded so far. So, you're still watching this this morning on uh, Channels Television and we're broadcasting live from Lagos, Nigeria. Today, the focus of our conversation is on meeting a World Bank target of reducing extreme poverty by 2020. And what will Nigeria can, or what lessons Nigeria can actually draw from this and what policies Nigeria can, Nigeria can actually implement to ensure that we're also part of meeting that target of reducing extreme poverty by 2020. And I have here with me in the studio a human capital development expert, Mike Adelea, who will be here when we return in just a moment.